there's a lot of talk about viability of the truly progressive candidates in the election, like Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard, two candidates that have spoken out against an unjust economic system and unjust healthcare systems and unjust electoral systems. They also have a very strong support uh, from, from a variety of different places, such as progressives and liberals, and even some conservatives like them. And I know, I know some folks out there are going to lose it here and say, well, well, if conservatives like them, well, then they probably stand for awful things. Or what they stand for goes beyond the binary of party lines and resonates with all types of people. But there are some people on the left that consider them spoilers or unrealistic candidates, but think someone like Joe Biden is realistic, right? Biden, who's been a walking ad for dementia on the campaign trail, is apparently more viable than Bernie, a man that has stood by the people for over three decades. And, you know, Biden's definitely more viable than a woman of color who stood by Bernie when she was told not to. Some people think that Amy Klobuchar is more viable. If viability was measured in how many platitudes per minute you can throw out on the debate stage, then the Democrats are all about platitudes. I mean, some people consider Elizabeth Warren more viable. Sure, if viability was about someone who says they're going to take corporate money because, well, the Republicans are going to do it. Well, Liz, the Republicans also want to restrict black and brown people from voting and women to not have access to services. So maybe that's not a really good reason to do something. You know, just say just say that you want to take the cold corporate cash to fill a swimming pool and, and swim in it just to know what it feels like. I mean, at least we the people would appreciate your honesty and then honestly probably not vote for you. The primary reason a candidate like Bernie Sanders is not considered viable is because of the term socialism, which has now been turned into a boogeyman by the two-party system and corporate media. So is there a chance that a socialist that can actually run for president and become president. Well, before Bernie and Tulsi and the Democratic Socialists that are in Congress now, Eugene Debs ran for president as a socialist five times, and one of those times was from prison. In 1901, Debs founded the Socialist Party of America and effectively became a thorn in the side of the two-party imperialism ever since. When he ran against Democrat Woodrow Wilson in 1912, he was able to get 6% of the votes. Debs was put into prison uh, after, and, and after going on trial because he criticized World War I and the draft in 1918 when said Democrat Woodrow Wilson was in office. And at that time, criticizing the military, including their fashion, was against the Sedition Act, which was basically like the Espionage Act light. And over 100 years later, it's a good thing we're not putting politicians behind bars based on an outdated law. You know, we're, we're, we're just putting real publishers that have never had to retract a story behind bars. I am, of course, referring to Julian Assange. So what the hell did Deb say in that speech that warranted an arrest from a democratic leadership. Debs pointed out that only the rich make war and only they decide the terms of peace. The middle class who would fight in these wars don't get to be involved in that process, which we don't. When was the last time an average iron worker was ever invited to any of the treaties of Paris? And really, if we think about it, when was the last time you hear the word treaty in our lexicon? The answer is 1898. We've pretty much replaced the word treaty with submit. After his speech that pointed out how the middle class has been cannon fodder for the arms industry and a battle for imperialistic control of power and resources, Debs was sentenced to three 10-year prison terms 
and had his right to vote revoked. This is basically like the origin story of the prison industrial complex. You know, we don't really treat prisoners like they're people. We treat them like turncoats in a revolution against nothing. Eugene Debs was also a union leader and a fan of Thomas Paine. He believed that a revolution was the start of the democracy, but we needed to fight tyranny of slavery. Right? His party stood against wage slavery of capitalism and was ready to fight for the working class. These are still terms we hear in our discussions today. For the last decade, minimum wage has stayed the same. The cost of everything is going up. And if we are all, if all we are doing is working for different CEOs, then we're not really free people. We're corporate slaves. And CEOs are not chief executive officers. They are chief executives, slave masters. In April of 1920, there was a petition to pardon Debs. And to this day, not one president has. Even symbolically, they have it. They have pardoned war criminals, corporate criminals, and even turkeys. But not a man who stood up against the ravages of the war machine and fought alongside the people. But this is the way that we've been demonizing socialism. We've equated it with treason. We've equated it with running a country. We, 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 we've equated it against a crime, right? We haven't equated it with running a country under compassion, understanding, and equality for each and every one of us. We have basically deemed that a punishable offense. Look, I'm not saying socialism is better than capitalism, but what I am saying is that both systems need each other to actually work. There are only two candidates running with the spirit of Eugene Debs in mind, Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard. I think both of these candidates working together as a team would shift the course of this country from one run by individualistic greed and a profit motive to one where all of us have what we need and are taking care of each other. The more we demonize these ideas, the more treasonous of a road we end up being on. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, then there is a good chance that you probably will enjoy my live stand-up comedy. My live stand-up comedy show addresses a lot of socio-political issues like the one you heard in this video. Uh, and I am on tour across the country pretty frequently. On December 21st, I will be at the Glitterbox Theater in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then I'll be touring all, in a variety of places all through 2020. January 3rd, I will be at the venue on 35th in Norfolk, Virginia. On January 4th, I will be at the brand new Comedy Closet Comedy Club in Columbia, South Carolina. On January 5th, I will be at the station in Carborough, North Carolina. And on January 17th, I will be at the Caffeine Underground in Brooklyn, New York. For all of my tour dates and ticket information, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. You can find uh, all of my videos on there, my tour dates on there. You can donate to uh, my Patreon or make an individual donation uh, all on my website. That website again is ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Hope to see you at a live show and thanks for tuning in. Stay taboo. We'll see you on the road.